So if you're watching this video, you're probably a big fan of Call of Duty Zombies, and you'll probably subscribe to me already. But if you're not, make sure to subscribe. Now, like me, I'm sure you're very, very excited for the next Call of Duty game from Treyarch so we can get our zombies fixed finally, but I know there are a few things in Black Ops 2 Zombies which we definitely don't want to see make a return in the next game. So here are my five things we don't want to see in Zombies, but if you guys have any others, definitely leave it down below in the comment section, and you could maybe see another five things we don't want to see. Fog rolling in, fog rolling in, fog rolling in. Now I don't know about you, but if introducing weather into a zombie map makes it interesting, then I'm definitely going to take a pass on that because fog is something that we do not like in Black Ops 2 Zombies. Let's cast our minds back to transit and how much fog there was in that map. It was literally unavoidable fog everywhere you go and there were so many hidden nasties within that fog. It just made it an absolute chore to go out in that fog and I'd rather just stay put in one place than ever having to venture out into that fog. Now we thought we heard the last of it but nope when it came to Origins and the little preview trailer we were told that there was going to be fog rolling in. Origins is exactly what it says on the tin. Fog rolling in. We have a larger scale than we've ever done before. Further enhanced by fog rolling in. In true zombie style our World War 1 has a thematic twist. Fog rolling in. We've introduced the zombie tank. This is a defendable platform that will move around the map, which you can use to fighting fog rolling in. We have 1,000 foot fog rolling in, driving across the landscape. Okay, I might have milked the fog rolling in part a little bit too much, but you get what I'm saying. We don't like fog, and we hopefully won't see it in future zombies maps. I understand it has to be put in there uh, on transit anyway, as the consoles at the time were very limited in what they could do. They couldn't have a lot of textures in the map, so they had to cover it over with fog. So that's it, really. Your privileges have been fucking revoked. Now, a bus was a pretty cool idea when we first saw it. We were like, wow, we can use a bus in a zombies map? How insane is that? But when you actually use it, it's an absolute waste of time and a horrible thing to use. As much as we love the little robot bus driver, using a bus was definitely not the way to go about things. The bus is tedious. It just takes a really, really long time. Sometimes you absolutely have to use it, and it's just really infuriating. Now, Treyarch did introduce another mode of transport in a map, which was the zombie tank, but that wasn't necessarily something you had to use. So that's a definite bonus positive way to look at transport in future maps. Don't have something which we have to use, because that bus was horrible. About to find out why. <laughs> I literally just have to say the word and you guys will quiver in fear. Denizens. Now they were the most infuriating thing I've ever encountered in any zombies map ever in a Call of Duty game. Who in their right mind thought denizens were a good idea? Something that would literally scratch your face off and rip your face off until you died when you're traveling out in the fog. It's literally adding something on already terrible and then throwing in something even worse it was like almost giving you a penalty for trying to make your way through the horrible fog but denizens were absolutely horrible thank god that there wasn't any more denizens than any other maps but Treyarch why on earth did you tease us in the mob of the dead trailer like that <laughs> When I heard that denizen noise, I was bricking it. I was like, oh my gosh, why did they do this? Now, this is not just, it's not just something which I've added in. That was actually in the trailer itself. It was like they just added it to troll us. Now, this one might be a bit of a mixed one, as I'm sure quite a lot of you actually enjoy buildables. But I want to focus on the uh, actual objective and the whole point of the buildables itself and that's you having to scour around the map to find different parts to build something. Now I want to focus particularly on the jet gun from Transit. Now let me tell, ask you guys, if you still play Transit, how many of you realistically find all the jet gun parts because you want to build that gun? The buildables in general I quite like, but it's for some of the things that you can build which are a little bit pointless in my opinion, and the jet gun definitely comes in at the most pointless buildable ever. 
as the parts around the map take you around about 20 to 30 minutes to gather up altogether. Then you get a gun which literally destroys itself after 10 to 15 seconds of continuous use. Now, if their buildables are going to make a return, for sure we can all agree here that we want the buildable parts to be in very similar locations, not too far from each other, that actually build something great and interesting that will have a positive effect on the gameplay. If we're being forced to pick up parts to build something that we don't necessarily want, but need to for an easter egg, example is transit completely, then that is something not fun and will make me not enjoy the map at all. I think Treyarch have learnt from their mistakes about how much of transit I've mentioned so far. <laughs> Now this last point is about annoying bosses in zombies and sure of course every single zombie map should have a boss round or a boss zombie at some point of course but when it gets too infuriating to actually progress through the game that's when I think there needs to be a slight line drawn and the big two examples I'm going to make are the Panzer Soldats from Origins and the Avogadro from Transit in Black Ops 2 Zombies. How frustrating were those bosses? There's not any other zombie bosses I can think of that have been as furiating as those two were. Sure, George Romero comes pretty close to the line as well, but at least you get a very nice benefit out of getting rid of George Romero rather than with the Avogadro and the Panzer Soldats. You don't really get anything, and the Panzer Soldats give you hardly any time at all to actually get out of that death grip they do before you get downed and insta-die. That's how I feel every time one of those things actually grab me. Unless you have a strong weapon, you're really screwed. That's a definite down right there. So what I'm trying to say is if we do have boss rounds in the next game, I'd like them to be a boss which isn't exactly something that we dread happening every time we're playing. Something that we know that is a little bit of a challenge that we can definitely overcome and will reward us highly for doing so like the dogs and the monkey rounds from ascension they're very nice they're not too difficult at all and you get a max ammo out of it that's nice but with the avogadro all you do is you stab it about four or five times but that's in the midst of a zombie round and you get nothing out of it whatsoever besides it disappearing now that's not cool. So that rounds up my five things that I don't want in Black Ops 3 slash World at War 2 zombies. And I'm sure you guys will agree with pretty much every point. But this sounded like a bit of more of a rant type video, which I definitely didn't want it to sound like. I just wanted this to kind of be a slightly hilarious parody video. Just talking about the things that we didn't like in Black Ops 2 zombies that we hope won't make a return. Of course, I absolutely love Treyarch and everything they do. I just feel that there was some mistakes made in Black Ops 2, which they obviously know about and will hopefully not make again in black ops 3 so really hope you guys enjoyed it if you did be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this and tons more black ops zombie stuff and i'll catch you guys very very soon